गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग फॉर एवरी वन एंड वेलकम सो टूडे माई द टॉक टाइटल इज अबाउट द टेक्स वी हैव वन एंशन टेक्स कॉल द वे ऑफ बुद्ध साधुआ एंड दिस इज द वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट text for for my life i received this teaching when i was um i think 10 10 11 years old and and actually later after one year later i went to traditional three year retreat like retreat although i was 13 and i haven't gone through the buddhist um uh philosophy studies all these things but the, what i learn is only this text and that really helps for my retreat so what this text discuss is discuss about love compassion and bodhicitta so bodhicitta meaning the mind of the enlightened enlightenment meaning the motivation so first we develop love and compassion then we expand that love and compassion and mix with the wisdom special the wisdom of the absolute truth absolute reality why because normally when we have compassion loving kindness compassion sometime we get the pain from other people and then we cannot really practice loving kindness compassion because we got others pain and it become burden and then our love and compassion become very limited but then when we combine this compassion with the wisdom special wisdom of absolute then the love become really genuine the compassion become very genuine and we can expand to uh, all beings sometime what we call non conceptual love and compassion so this text discuss about all these things so let's um, maybe we at the beginning we will try to do now little bit meditation together so this meditation is um coming home to bring our mind to the body and relax the muscles in the body relax meaning you give the permission to be yourself you don't have to be a uh, control you don't you don't have to imitate somebody or copy someone just be yourself be with your body okay so first please raise your hand like this so when we raise hand like this there is some kind of like weight right gravity now relax so you feel relax at the same time feeling of gravity but at the same time there is strength strength and relax and that is the balance so we will do like that so please keep your spine loose and straight it doesn't matter wherever you are on the chair on the cushion on your bed outside it doesn't matter and now please if you want you can close your eyes and now relax muscles in the body meaning let your body as it is now focus on the top of the head and just let it be all the 
tensions, tightness. Just relax. Drop all the control, tight, stress. And now move back of the head, face, and you don't need to be particular smile or you don't need to be <clears throat> particular expression. expression. Just be yourself. Smile is okay. Crying is okay. Doesn't matter. Neck. Shoulders, back, chest, stomach, arms and legs. And if you cannot relax, it's okay. Allow that. You cannot relax. When you are allowed that you cannot relax, that means you are relaxing. And now, please appreciate that you have this body. Wonderful. You have senses. Organs. And you have this wonderful breath. And appreciate that still alive. We are still alive. Wonderful. Now, please, if you close your eyes, now you can open your eyes. And Rest your mind as it is for a few seconds. Okay. So, basically, what we believe is we all have this wonderful nature, sometimes what we call the our basic innate goodness, the original purity, in Tibetan what we call kada, kada meaning the original purity, and sometimes what we call Buddha nature, nature of enlightenment, Dharmakaya. So this wonderful nature is, uh, our true nature is wonderful. Like sometimes some scientists said, if we have 10 qualities, one is negative, nine, nine is positive. But normally what we look, what we see is only one negative. And then we exaggerate that one. You can try this, you know, uh, put your thumb like that. And now close your one eyes, close one eyes like this. And now slowly, slowly bring your thumb close to your eyes, okay? Slowly, slowly, slowly. What happened now? Now you see everything is thumb. Thumb become very big. Look up, also thumb. Look right side, also you see thumb. Down, also thumb. <laughs> right? Okay, now bring your thumb slowly, slowly away from your eyes. Slowly, slowly. Okay, now what do you see? The normal thumb, right? So that's the, how our mind, what we call grasping. So Normally, we don't see all these good qualities within ourselves. What we see is we are looking for some problem. 
And then what happened? First, problems like this. Maybe we have 10% of problem. Everybody has problem, of course. Everybody does mistakes. Everybody uh, have problems. That's normal, it's okay. We have to accept the problem. Accept that we are human being. That's totally okay. But then the main problem is we don't want to have problem. And then we create small problem, become bigger and bigger, bigger. Then in the end, thumb become bigger than a mountain. <laughs> so, so therefore, how to balance, how to free ourselves from the, the grasping. So grasping is like putting ourselves into our own jail, in our own box. So for that, in the way of Bodhisattva, first important is intention, what we call the motivation. The intention is really important. So here intention is love and compassion. And this love and compassion is actually with us all the time. You all have love and compassion, 24 seven. <laughs> Do you believe or no? How many of you believe that you have love and compassion 24 seven? Excuse me, if you believe, raise your hand. Mm, I hope you are raising hand. <laughs> what I see is only camera. But anyway, and how many of you don't believe that? Raise your hand. And if you don't believe, I hope you are raising hand too. So I think some of you raise your hand that, right? I don't believe. Me either. When, when I was young, I received this teaching. I don't believe that I have this wonderful nature the basic inner goodness. I received these teachings from my father and Bajadara Tai Siddhu many other great teachers. And at the beginning, I thought, mm, they tried to, you know, please me. Uh, I thought, especially my father, I thought, my father is doing his job. <laughs> Father's job, try to, you know, please me. But now I believe. So, what is the essence of love and compassion? So love is looking for something nice, meaningful, looking for happiness, looking for uh, virtue. Maybe that wonderful thing come to you or happen to others or friends or family. So, they are wonderful or wish they are to have more and more wonderful things or you are wonderful or you want to have more wonderful things with you so these are the love actually so how many of you want to be happy so if you want to be happy raise your hand <laughs> i think you all raise your hand right so that is coming from love. Why you come here in front of this screen? Now why you're watching my video? Because you're looking for happiness. You might thought, oh, this guy, you know, if I join this teaching from this guy, maybe I will be more peaceful, more happy or something. And I know while you're watching now, maybe you watch like this way, maybe you watch like this way, maybe like this way, maybe like that way. Why looking for happiness? This way too long become cause of suffering. Uneasy. Ah, a little bit of happiness. Or oh, like this is good. Or oh, some of you are, might be very serious. Okay, way up with the sadhava today. But then if it's too long, you have back pain. More happy. Maybe like this. <laughs> so every movement of our body is looking for happiness. Every eyes blink is looking for happiness. Not only with the body, actually every thought is looking for happiness. Every emotion. When I was young, I had panic attacks. I really don't like this panic. For me, the problem is panic or panic. Is worse than panic. 
So I don't like this panic. It's actually compassion. The panic is a problem for me, so I want to get rid of that. And I'm looking for such peace, come. That is the love. So therefore, actually, you all have this feeling, this motivation, this sense, 24 seven. So therefore, you all have love and compassion, 24 seven. But what is the problem now? The problem is, remember this? We are not recognized that. We are not recognized. We don't know how to connect with our deeper level. So what is our deeper level? Love, compassion, awareness, wisdom. These are our true nature. And we don't know how to con connect to that. So what happened? Our mind face out and looking for problem. And make small problem as huge problem. We make more. Uh, we make mountain. We make mall out of mountain. So, so therefore, it is very important that to recognize these good qualities within ourselves. So I, at the beginning, we did the appreciation meditation, right? Just appreciate that you are alive. Just appreciate that you have whatever senses. Now, maybe you hear my voice, you see this video, and you have this body. You have this brain, you have this organs, wonderful. And you have some friends and a family, wonderful. You have place to sit, wonderful. You have a shelter, wonderful. You can eat, wonderful. So these are really important. So now, the how we connect, the motivation is love and compassion. But then what happened, we stuck on the service level. The service level is the grasping, like this small problem become huge problem. But then when we go deeper level, deeper level, deeper level, behind of each emotion, there's a love and compassion, even the hatred. So, but it is not so easy. So therefore, in the way of Buddha Sadhu, the first, important is to develop this love and compassion, then expand this love and compassion, become first to understand love and compassion within yourself and your friends and family, then expand to the world, in the end expand to all beings. Then not only that, you really want to help all beings fully recognize true nature, free from all the suffering, all the problems. Therefore, I'm going to do all the virtue. I'm going to do all the uh, meditation. So that is called the bodhicitta. So bodhicitta meaning all of us want to be happy, don't want to suffer, right? Every movement, every breath, every eye blink. So what is the final destination to fully back to our home, free from suffering? our real home, our true nature. And that is the fully recognize our true nature. So that is the enlightenment. So I want to help this for all beings. But can you do that or no? Can you help all beings, help them to fully recognize their true nature? Can, can you or no? Yes or no? Yes. If you think yes, raise your hand. <laughs> I think impossible. Forget about helping all beings. Now I cannot help myself also. So therefore, for the realistic way, I, I don't have that capacity now. Therefore, I'm going to meditate now. I'm going to study the way of Buddha Sadhava now. I'm going to do generosity. I'm going to have ethical conduct. Then I want to develop patience. Then I want to be persistent, effort, then I want to meditate, then the most important is the wisdom, I want to understand my true nature. So these are what we call six parameters. All these texts, the, the ancient texts, the way of Buddha Sattva, at the beginning, love and compassion, and Buddha Chitta, then after that, 
discuss about these six practice. So first is the generosity. Second is the ethical conduct. And the third is the patience. And the fourth is the effort. And the fifth is the meditation. And last is the wisdom, the most important, that recognize our true nature. So these six are the, the practice of the way of the sadhua. And then, so now in Dargar, we have this plan, special plan that to teach all these ancient texts, these ancient teachings, maybe cycle of three years, the sutra, tantra, and the, the nature of mind, the mahamudra and maati. So like that, every three years we teach different texts. So for the long run, everybody get this lineage transmission. So normally to study all this, it will take nine to 18 years. Of course, now we don't have that much time. And then to do retreat, we have three year retreat, fully time dedicated for that. We don't have much time. So now we are thinking about to essence of these teachings and put it into small short video and kind of like small retreat here and there and next uh, next week I will do the the way of Bodhisattva four day retreat this is the to abstract the essence of this way of Bodhisattva text then the following whole year we will study about the, the way of Bodhisattva I have short videos, webinars, and great teachers come from the various tradition. So we really want to have this lineage pass on to the many people. So now let's say how can we apply this the intention and this six practice in everyday life? So, for example, whatever you, you do, the first important is motivation. So, if we have meaningful motivation, inspire motivation, the virtue related, motiv motivation related with the virtue, motivation connected with love and compassion, then whatever you do become meaningful. You are so happy and you will not feel your job as job you will feel your job as holiday. It's creativity, a sense of joy every day. Very happy. So then the whatever your job, it will benefit others, many other people. And of course, the benefit for others, benefit for you also, because you and other are independent. The other is half of you, right? So therefore, is really benefit so intention is really important so you can try next time when you go to workplace develop intention any work unless if you are doing like drugs and uh, guns making guns those things we cannot change the motivation otherwise normal job sales or manager or the architecture or whatever you do if you do nicely with intention, want to help the customer, want to help other people, then your job become much better. You are become more happy. And then your work is good, your business is good, whatever you do, the spiritual life, mundane life comes together. Win-win situation. So motivation is very important. Then when you go to the actual work, the first is what we call generosity within six within the six parameters. Generosity, you, you start. You have to give your time. You have to give your whatever energy, whatever. So normally, could be material generosity, could be what we call protection, could be spiritual. So whatever, you need to sacrifice something, right? Whatever you do your job, 
if you open all the opportunities and waiting and waiting waiting what happened in the end nothing happened <laughs> you will get not much but in order to do something you have to sacrifice you have to give this time effort whatever to yourself to the job or to other others so generosity is very important to start so what happened now i i have this uh research um, data that nowadays we focus more than 60 or 70 percent of our time to the meaningless things we don't really focus on our job or our practice or whatever the meaningful we don't do that we focus something else so then in the end we will be not happy everybody will not be happy so generosity and next is the ethical conduct so whatever we do there is a the government law there is the good citizenship there is the the basically what we call non-violence don't harm to others whatever we do try our best and help which way according to your capacity according to your um what we call things that you can do you have resource you have knowledge you have skill whatever so according to that try your try your best to help so non-violence and try your best to help these are essence of ethical conduct the next important is patience whatever you do the result will not come like that up and down life is up and down work also up and down uh, study also up and down meditation also up and down spiritual life also up and down so we have to be patient this is really important then next is effort persistent patient and persistent are really important key point for the life nowadays we don't have we don't have patience we want to have result tomorrow so that's the problem and then it doesn't have that then our mind become very narrow and upset and then make a lot of problem then the now thumb getting close 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 to your eyes <laughs> without patience so patience is very important but patience is not give up what we call letting go but letting go is letting go is not the giving up don't give up try your best use your effort energy time resource whatever you have so persistent 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 that's the effort joyful effort then number five is the concentration so whatever we do we need to have mind and body together with that so sometimes what why i have some discussion with scientists what they could flow so when you are in the flow moment and that time you feel the most happy and you get a lot of job also all this flow the samadhi concentration comes when you have generosity ethic and the patience and persistence all this together then you have flow you have the that concentration level samadhi and last is wisdom wisdom is a key point without wisdom you don't know how to do your job without wisdom for the spiritual life we will not recognize our true nature so wisdom is very important so these are the really beneficial key points of the way of buddha sattva and i hope uh, you will learn in the future more and more about way of buddha sattva thank you so now i will open some q a thank you Rinpoche. Yes. uh we have uh, quite a few questions already so the first one dear Rinpoche. How is it that loving kindness and compassion are contained within negative emotions like anger? So anger is comes from somebody is harm to me, not doing good job. They harm to the world. They harm to the uh, my friends. So that we think is the problem. So we want to remove that. So actually, is coming out of kind care concern so actually hatred because of grasping and ignorance sometimes what i call 
if there's a light in the middle, then there's a glass. So glass has scary image, maybe snakes, crocodiles, a ghost, or whatever, tigers. And then if we cover the light with the scary image, with the glass, then what happened? We will see our room is full of scary image. But that image comes from the light. Without light, there will be no scary image. But the problem is the cover, the glass. So glass is what we call ignorant, not recognizing our true nature, not recognizing love and compassion with us all the time. And not just intellectually recognize, is not benefit, just intellectually recognize. We have to really bring into the experience. So therefore, actually, essence of all the negative thought and emotion is love and compassion. Thank you, Rinpoche. You mentioned that motivation is important. What about guilt-related motivation? I'm lazy and ashamed of things I've done, and I cannot see my own innate kindness and compassion. So when we feel guilt, that is also coming from love and compassion. So guilt, and we don't like to have guilt. And we don't want to have the whatever situation of the guilt. We don't want to have the, that object of that guilt. So we want, we don't want. So that is actually compassion. We want to have perfect. We, want, we don't want to be lazy. We don't want to feel this guilty. So that is love, actually. So it's there, essence of the guilt. But normally, we don't see that essence. We're stuck on the service level. Then it's become guilt. Thank you. Uh, any suggestions about how to approach our own physical pains and physical limitations? with love and compassion. So pains, normally we don't like pain, right? Body don't like pain. Actually, that protects the body. Fear to pain is healthy normally. Fear of the dangers is quite healthy. So there's a sense of protecting, sense of kind, sense of concern. and. Um, so we can see the essence of the pain. There is love and compassion there. But if when we think about the helping others and if you become too much burden, too much painful, then normal what we call, we have to be very, we have to have the balance. If you cannot help, then let go also for a while. And you can help, but you don't want to help also might be extreme and you do over your limit also extreme so what buddha said we have to find the balance thank you Rinpoche. you have said that we do not have the ability to help all beings right now however if we have the aspiration to help all beings doesn't this really benefit all beings? Normally what we call, when we recognize our true nature, then we are more capable to help others. Just having connections, um, special in the way of Buddha Sattva, when we fully recognize our true nature, we become a Buddha. So when you fully recognize, when we achieve enlightenment, then the enlightened activity comes spontaneous present. So it will help boundless beings, countless beings. But now, no, only a few people. Uh, Rinpoche, do you think it is possible for a person to live in the mundane world and become a bodhisattva? Is enlightenment available outside monastic life? Of course, of course. Normally, the what Buddha teach, the bodhisattva is mostly for the lay people. The first teaching of Buddha, Buddha taught at the, uh, what we call Saranath. And that teaching, main focus for the, um, in that time, like monastic 
Sanghas. And the second big teaching Buddha taught at the near Rajagir, and that is the way of Bodhisattva, the essence of way of Bodhisattva. Is of course everybody, doesn't matter for monastic or lay people or male or female, everybody. So normally when we look at these suttas, the noble um, uh, son and noble daughters, meaning male and female, the householders with the address like that. Thank you. What is the difference between greed and love? When I love intensely, that's, that's all I want. For instance, I want to earn a lot of money so I can buy a big house for my family. Is that greed or is that love? So once it's become kind of selfish, harm to others, then it's become greed. But once you want to help you and family, of course, you, you have to survive. And for, for everybody, become love. So it depends on the, the limit is up to you. We cannot, I cannot really tell this love and this greed. Thank you, Rinpoche. How does one fight anxiety? I feel this is standing in my way of being a benefit. How can I just let go of negative thoughts? Essence of negative thought is also love and compassion. When we more recognize that love and compassion, that sense of warm, even that thought is coming from love. And then you see this feeling this intention behind the thought, behind emotion, more and more than the thought emotion dissolve into love and compassion. But if it doesn't happen like that, then maybe normally I teach these three important practices, awareness, love and compassion and wisdom. So now I'm talking about the love and compassion, but there's another practice, it's awareness. So awareness is we need to change our attention on something, maybe first on our breath, breathing in, breathing out, just be with the breath. And once we develop some experience, how to be with the breath, and slowly, slowly be with the body. So we did this together, relax the body. And slowly, slowly, you can watch the anxiety. And sometimes anxiety becomes stronger. And don't watch anxiety, back to the breath. Or listen to sound. So do these things. And if there's too much overwhelm, you should check with the psychology. It really helps. And then physical exercise, aerobic exercise. So three things really helps. Meditation, check with the doctor, medication or therapy or whatever, and aerobic exercise. Three combined together, really beneficial. Thank you, Rinpoche. This is a, a similar question from a different angle. How do you remain happy even if there is a problem? How to stay relaxed during problems? So normally suffering, happiness is just a mental state. There's no such thing, happiness, suffering on the object. For example, we think heat is no good, too hot in the outside. But the people go to sauna, where the heat is very strong in the sauna, but if we feel happy, oh, oh, I pay money for this heat, make special time for this heat. So heat outside the sauna, suffering. Heat inside the sauna, happiness. But the heat is same, even though it's quite intensive to the body. So therefore, we can always transform the mental state. But the outside circumstances sometimes can, sometimes cannot. And special, the way of Bodhisattva, we can transform those into love and compassion, into awareness, into wisdom. So therefore, maybe you cannot change outside circumstances. Sometimes we have to accept that. But inside you are happy, deeper level. And when you are happy, and that helps to 
solve the problem outside outside circumstances also because inside outside interdependent thank you i don't know how to practice loving kindness for myself because i doubt myself how do i know that i'm doing it right i cannot practice love and compassion to myself you like that or no if you don't like that that is compassion do you want to have more love and compassion to yourself? If yes, that is love. <laughs> it's just, just right there, deeper level. So we always try to connect to the deeper level of ourselves, that true nature of ourself. Awareness, love and compassion, wisdom is with us all the time. So what we call our true nature is like sky. And then hatred, guilt, the panic, um, stress depression pride jealousy all these are cloud cloud in the sky no matter how much stone cloud stone storm pollution it doesn't change the nature of sky without sky you cannot have cloud isn't it so actually without love compassion and wisdom awareness you cannot have guilt doubt hatred all these things so when we recognize, it, as I mentioned at the beginning, to recognize our true nature, when we recognize that, then everything becomes wisdom. Everything becomes love and compassion. Everything becomes awareness. Thank you, Rinpoche. How does one see all thoughts as mantra coming from my loving, compassionate, true nature when thoughts like you are stupid or you are bad come to mind. So look at love and compassion is motivation, is feeling, is intention. So you are bad, you are bad. We don't like that. So that is the compassion. Compassion don't want to have a problem. And we want to have good thought. That is love. So focus on that. Focus on that. Yeah. So now the last question. Uh, last question. How can I help someone who is trapped in the prison of negative beliefs? Yeah, so normally we need to focus three things. First, intellectually. From, so, ten good things, we focus on the one negative, and we deny nine good things. So we have to shift our focus and try to look for the good things so from the intellectual level second we have to meditate be with that love compassion third we have to repeat repeat action do something maybe try to do something uh social work maybe try to help others try to do something uh meaningful things action and these three can help change to transform ourselves step by step. Thank you. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you. Any closing comments or should I do we just finish today? Thank you very much for all of you and hopefully uh, get some happiness from here. <laughs> and definitely I'm very happy to share this. So happiness for both of us. We will dedicate this for the world peace and special nowadays we're having the pandemic around the world and we all dedicate this uh, virtue and happiness to end this pandemic soon. Thank you. Thank you, Rinpoche. So if you found this session helpful, you are welcome to join Minga Rinpoche for uh, the Heart of the Way of the Bodhisattva retreat in a couple of weeks. That's from the 13th to the 15th of August. Uh, this retreat is open to everyone, and the slide I'm about to put up has the, uh, the link for that to get in for more information about that. So thank you all very much for joining us, and uh, enjoy your day.